Am I the antagonist for making a post about the girl who falsely accused me causing her to have a nervous breakdown? I won't go into details about the allegations, but there was a girl in my class that accused me of some serious stuff after we had a disagreement. She went to the department head and afterwards to the dean and police, which caused me to be suspended and then interrogated by the police. The only reason I got saved was because of her ex-best friend, who came forward and made a statement to the police and shared voice messages she received from her on WhatsApp where she admitted she was intending to ruin my life no matter what she had to say. Long story short, she got kicked out while I was allowed to take semester 3 and 5 simultaneously next year to avoid wasting time alongside a fake verbal apology for what I've been through. Last week, I learned that she was planning to study in a nearby city college, so I went to the students' Facebook group and shared my story warning and telling them to be careful. I didn't mention her name or any identifying information after my lawyer's advice, but since many students are from my city and even had friends in our college, they asked around and quickly found out about her. Yesterday, her dad came to the shop I currently work and kept apologizing for what his daughter did and begging me to take down the post because it was gaining much engagement by the day and more people found out about her identity, which caused her to have a nervous breakdown. After she made the accusation, many friends stopped talking to me and people kept sending me insults. I didn't leave the house except to talk to the police for five months because even the neighbors received the news and everyone looked at me like I was a monster. I became friends with her ex-best friend, and I told her today about the conversation I had with her dad. She didn't know that I made the post until I mentioned it. She said that it was unnecessary to make because she already got what she deserved. They had to sell the house and leave the city. Her siblings stopped talking to her, and she didn't get to take the finals. She falsely accused you and now can't handle the repercussions? She made your life terrible for months over fake allegations and even risked you going to jail. You shouldn't have to take down the post, and it is important to have up to try and save another victim. She deserves to have what she did follow her around for the rest of her life. Am I the antagonist for refusing to let my brother meet my son after what he told me at my husband's funeral? My late husband passed away from a car accident when I was four months pregnant. It's been difficult without him, but my family did so much to support me. I moved in with them a month after. At the funeral, my older brother asked for a minute to talk, then asked me if I really wanted to go through with my pregnancy. I was shocked when I heard this, but even more shocked when he suggested that I make the right decision, not an emotional decision, and reconsider having my son. He gave many reasons why, including the fact how single-slash-widowed mom are considered too much of baggage for so many men to date. I lost it on him and kicked him out. That was the last time we saw each other. My son is now three weeks old. The whole family met him and were happy to welcome him. My parents asked if I could let my brother come meet my son, even for a few hours. I refused, but they said I was making a mistake, robbing my son of a future loving relationship with his uncle. They asked that I don't let my emotions dictate a decision that might have a lasting impact, but I said no. My extended family got involved and started pushing, especially after my brother started insisting, saying my husband was a dear friend of his and what I'm doing right now would make my husband upset if he saw it. Am I being bitter and selfish? Firstly, what an awful thing to say, and to say it while still at the funeral makes it ten times worse. Has he even apologized for what he said? He is not entitled to a relationship with his nephew, and your family trying to push it without him having even apologized is terrible. I hope you and your son have a better future ahead. Am I the antagonist for snapping at a colleague that tried to one-up my friend's death? I have a colleague, Cheryl, who is a notorious one-upper. Some stuff is just relating slash sympathizing, so that's not so bad. Others, she just has to have the bigger story and have all the attention. It's annoying but also relatively harmless, so I don't say anything. On Friday night, I got word that a friend of mine passed away. It was very unexpected, and we still don't know the cause. He was young and healthy. Needless to say, my weekend was consumed by this, and I'm devastated. Yesterday, I come into work and another colleague asks me how I'm holding up. They saw my Facebook post. Cheryl asks what's going on, and I say, a good friend of mine passed on Friday. 
Without missing a beat, Cheryl says, Did you hear about the old man that drowned this weekend at local beach? I was pissed. It wasn't something innocent like one-upping weekend plans. My very good friend died. Instead of even offering condolences, she had to find the way to make the conversation about her. I snapped and told her, okay? That's tragic, but what does that have to do with what I just said? She got flustered and said, I was just making conversation. I replied, yeah, changing the subject from my friend's death. For once, can you not one-up a story and let someone else talk about their own lives? My friend freaking died, and I'm talking about how sad I am, and you changed the subject? What is wrong with you? Cheryl got upset and walked away. Some colleagues think I was too hard on her. Others think I was justified. Am I the antagonist? Your grieving are in shock, and her crassness was just too much. Her behavior is exhausting and insensitive. Cheryl should have been put right years ago. I'm sorry you had to deal with her, and also sorry for your loss. Am I the antagonist for telling my future mother-in-law it's not our fault she doesn't have anywhere to stay? My mother-in-law lives in another state and me and her son are getting married soon. She's being looking to book a hotel or Airbnb for a week or so now. The thing is, she's waiting until less than a month from the wedding to look for one. I sent her so many affordable rooms and Airbnb in her budget for over a year and a half. All of them only required a $50 deposit to book them, too. We'll, since we're in a super touristy city, she can't find a room or Airbnb within her budget. Due to the wedding, we have absolutely no extra money to help her out. She asked if she and her boyfriend could stay in our apartment in the living room the day before and the night of the wedding. We told them absolutely not. We aren't getting a hotel and are coming back to our apartment after the wedding, and I don't want to spend my wedding night with his mom and her boyfriend in the living room. He agreed and is completely on my side. She started complaining about how it's going to be M.Y. fault she can't make it to the wedding and more B.S. I straight up said, it's not our fault you don't have anywhere to stay. You decided to wait till last minute and this is your own fault. My fiancé agreed and told her to stop texting and attacking me. He also told her I was right and this is nothing but poor planning on her part. She hasn't spoken to us since and we're not sure if she's coming to the wedding now. I think she did have a plan on where to stay, but her plan didn't work due to you having a backbone and saying no. The fact your fiancé also supported and defended you is fantastic. Well done and all the best with your wedding. Am I the antagonist for telling my always late friends an earlier time so we'd be on time? So I, 32 female, have been friends with this group of people, 303132-F, since high school. I love them all to death, but Jesus Christ on a cruise ship when we plan something, they are always consecutively late. Every time, and it drives me nuts. One year, they almost made us miss our flight home. And they always say they forgot the time or thought they had more and just goofed around. It has gotten to the point where I will meet them because I refuse to get caught up in the drama. Last year, I left on my own accord to the airport because they were all passed out and would not wake up. They missed checkout and had to pay for an extra day. Then they barely made it to the airport in time for their flights. Apparently, I'm pushy for ensuring we leave at a certain time, considering traffic, possible accidents slash delays, and even looking up shortcuts in case. Throughout the years, sharing a ride with them has almost made me late to work before. Lesson learned, so now I take an extra day off just in case. Our vacations themselves are fun and easy going. So this vacation was pretty smooth up until the end. We all decided to choose a night where we would plan all the events. Mine was Friday. It was a fairly relaxing day. I scheduled a pedicure for 9.30 a.m. and I told them it was at 8.45. They showed up at 9.15 and were surprised we got in so quickly. I reserved a table for us for lunch at 1 p.m. I told them it was 12.30. They arrived at 12.52 with the same reaction. That night I had reserved us a table at this really nice dining establishment for 7.30 and I told them 6.45. They arrived at 7.10 p.m. It was a great night. 
Sunday, when we were going home, I said my goodbyes, checked out of my hotel room, and took my separate Uber to the airport for my 2 p.m. flight home. I got home around 8 and turned on my phone to the equivalent of an assault on my group chat. Apparently, they had left late again, and one of them missed their flight, and they were arguing about it. I told my roomie what was going on and what I did, and she said that was rude of me to manipulate their time like that. She knows one of the girls and told her what I did, and now all the girls are mad at me. My Friday scheduling had absolutely nothing to do with one missing their flight. Am I the asshole? These people are in their 30s and are still so late they miss flights? And they get grumpy at you for making them be on time? I think it's time to find some new people to hang around. These people sound exhausting.